Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we are going to explore the process of setting up Spring Boot with IntelliJ, one of the most popular Java IDE. By the end of this tutorial, you will be ready to kickstart your Spring Boot projects with ease. So let's get started. The first step is to install IntelliJ, if you haven't already. You can download it from the official JetBrains website. Once downloaded, Follow the installation instructions for your operating system. Now that we have IntelliJ installed, let's create a new Spring Boot project. For that, you need to open your browser and search for Spring Initializer or Spring Starter. And here you can find the first one, click on that. And this is the home page where you can configure your Spring Boot application. Here I am going to choose the project as Maven and the language let it be Java. Also choose the latest version of Spring Boot other than Snapshot. On the downside, populate the metadata with your group ID and artifact ID. Here you can change it to anything what you want. Here I am going to change it to Spring Boot. And do the same for artifact. And leave everything as default. Here I am choosing Java 17 because I am installed Java 17 in my system. And the next thing you need to do is to choose the dependency. Click on add dependencies and choose the dependencies which you need to have in your Spring Boot application. Here search for Spring Web. Yeah, the first one and add more dependencies by clicking on add dependencies then the next thing we need to do is to add the JDBC let it be spring data JDBC which is SQL so that we can write SQL queries in our spring boot application and run it and we need to add one more dependency which is H2 database. This is the database which we are going to use in our Spring Boot application. And click on generate which will download a Spring Boot file. And this is a zip file. You need to extract this zip file in your folder and open that folder with your IntelliJ. I am extracting this zip file with WinRAR. And after extraction, I will move this folder to some other location. Let me choose my new volume D. And I will paste it here. Okay, this is our Spring Boot initialized file. And we are going to open IntelliJ now. Accept the terms and conditions and click on continue. Okay, now open our downloaded folder from here. Here you can see the folder is dictated as a Spring Boot folder. And click on trust project here and open it. Here by seeing the folder structure itself we can understand Spring Boot is initialized successfully. Here we are getting some pop-ups and first one is Microsoft Defender. Let me choose this to automatically and the second one uh, which is asking to load Marvin project. Click on load Marvin project. 
This is because we have chosen Marvin project at the time of initialization. And this process will take some time to complete. Here you can see some error have occurred. To avoid this error, let's resync this again. If you are getting this error, just click on this button. So which will again sync this project and download the dependencies which have not downloaded. So no error is there now. We can close this one safely. After everything we have successfully landed in our poem.xml page and let's check it out everything is correct or not. Yes, Spring Boot is there and Java version is 17 and we are using H2 database. Okay, so everything feels like right, right now. The next thing we need to go to SRC folder inside that main folder. Then okay, Spring, Spring Boot application is there. Here it is saying project SDK or JDK is not there, not defined. So let's define the project SDK. For setting up our project SDK, click on setup SDK. And choose the version 17. That's it. Now we can run this application. For running this application, click on the play button. So we can see our project is building and build is successful and we need to open this link that is localhost in our web browser. Click on allow and here you can find the localhost IP address and the port address. Tomcat is initialized successfully. Let's find out our local host address. Yeah, it too. I think it was not there. So let's try with our local host. Is to eight thousand. Sorry, eighty eighty. Yeah, the, this results a white label error page. It is nothing but it is which is giving status four not four. That is page not found. So we can see our Tomcat is running successfully and the web uh, and the Spring Boot application is suc running successfully. Uh, and it is returning a white label error because we are not defining uh, or uh, sending back any results to the web browser. For that we need to create a basic controller, home controller. Here we are going to write some basic Java code. Let it be public string and the function name. Not to string, let, let us write as hello. Let's give the function name as hello. And return something else. Uh, let's return some string so that if we call hello in the URL, which will return hello world in the page and we need to declare this as a controller we need to tell the compiler that this is a controller then only the compiler will understand that this is a spring boot con controller and we need to define this as get method and so as you know there are lot of mappings there like get mapping put mapping delete mapping so we are we here we are going to use get mapping so that uh, which will get the data from the url and which will return accordingly and we are declaring the get mapping as slash only so uh, just the local host that is just the home page the index page will return hello world now rerun this application
and now we are going to refresh the web browser and which will reflect this hello world as the output see you can see hello world as the output if you need to add some html tag or uh, elements you can write directly here like return in after return let's write some h1 or bold or whatever you want now if you refresh this it won't work every time you need to rerun this uh, tomcat server then only it will uh, take the java code and which will display in the browser so after every change you need to rerun this uh, server so let's start this server again and the server have started successfully yeah now the server has started successfully no it's not working why let's see why it is disabled no it's not disabled i think yeah it is this let's restart the server how to restart yeah this option which will restart our server now refresh this web browser you can see hello world is on h1 tag and if you want to add some color just add style color is equal to not color is equal to color full colon then let it be red now rerun this server again and go to your web browser and refresh okay server started now going to web browser and we are refreshing this web page and you can see the output in red color and this is the basic default url and let's pass some other url that is let's pass some other parameters instead of slash let's type it as name so if you call name on the url which will return this output let the color be blue and let the name be genoi so if you call this name that is uh, if you call localhost slash a name which will return uh, wait there is a mirror okay the function name should not be same so this will return um, a name that is here we are returning genoi in blue color if we call if you call name here as get then which will return genoi as the output in blue color so this is how the get mapping works similarly if you don't want to use the get mapping you can use the post mapping also there is put mapping delete mapping etc etc in the next part we will take your spring boot application to the next level by configuring it to automatically reload the server every time you make changes to your code this can save you a lot of time and efforts since you do won't need to manually restart the server so stay tuned for part 2 where we will dive into setting up automatic reload with Spring Boot Dev Tools. That wraps our tutorial on installing and configuring Spring Boot with IntelliJ. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more tutorials. If you have any questions or topics you would like to like us to cover in future videos, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and happy coding.